Yeah. I am just singing the praises of HelloFresh. Why? Because I like my food quick and easy, you know? And they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And my pals at HelloFresh agree. And now my Full House buddies, go to HelloFresh.com slash Full House Free and use code Full House Free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while the subscription is active, of course. But that is free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Full House Free with code Full House Free. Easy to remember, right? <laughs> That's why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. And that is music to my ears. Hello. Fresh. Yeah. Welcome to episode six of Full House Rewind, also known as Daddy's Home. I'm your host, Dave Coulier. Marla Sokoloff is our guest on the show today, and she's going to be joining us shortly. Well, episode six opens in the living room. Stephanie is wearing her tutu, getting ready for her ballet recital. Jesse's girlfriend, Adriana, shows up unannounced. Danny gets called in to work at the TV station and has to miss Stephanie's recital. Well, Joey decides he wants to make some changes in his life. He wants to have more danger and adventure like Jesse. DJ Stephanie, Michelle, and Joey wearing his new adventurous wardrobe, including a leather biker outfit, do a fashion show in the living room. Then Michelle calls Jesse and Joey Dada. Well, Danny feels like he's working too much and not spending enough time with his girls. So he decides that they're going to have Daddy Daughter Day. Then Jesse teaches Joey how to ride a motorcycle. Meanwhile, Danny continues day two of Daddy Daughter Day. Joey takes off on Jesse's motorcycle, and when he returns, Joey tells Jesse that he met a girl down the street and fell asleep on her couch. Danny has a heart to heart with DJ. She tells Danny that it's hard being brave for my little sister all the time. Well, Danny tucks Michelle into bed, and just as he's walking out of her room, she calls him Dada. We'd like to hear what you think about episode six, so uh, send us an email at fullhouserewind at podco.us. And with that, let's get on with the show. You've got messages. Oh, time to check our messages. David, it's me, the big boss here at Full House Rewind. Look, I'm just checking in to see how the show is going. Ah, uh, big boss? Yes, what is it, Henry? Ah, uh, big boss, I got Taylor Swift on the line. All right, Dave, I gotta grab that. We're looking for big numbers, big numbers, okay? Call me any day between 10 and about 10.03 a.m. I've always got time for you. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. I can't believe the big boss called me. I love that. And you know what? You're going to love our special guest on the show today. I first met Marla Sokoloff on Full House. She played the character Gia Mahan for eight episodes. And Gia was a bit of a bad girl. She would also come back as Gia for 11 episodes on Fuller House. Marla is a wonderful actress with a great sense of comedy. She's been on Party of Five, The Practice with my buddy and hockey pal David E. Kelly, and Grey's Anatomy to name just a few. She's also a writer, producer, and a director. Here's a pic of Marla when Full House was on the air. Please welcome to Full House Rewind, Marla Sokoloff. Hi. It is, uh, it is <laughs> We have known each other for so long. Isn't it crazy? And you How many look years, so you great. Think? Thank you so much. My goodness, the first thing that, that she said to me was, hi, how are you? And I'm like, good, good, good. And I said, how are you? And she said, well, I popped out another human <laughs> since the last time I saw you. You look fantastic. Thank you very much. How are those? Your daughters, I, I follow you on Instagram. They are so cute. My Thank you. My goodness sakes, I've known them since they were little teeny weenies. I know, I know. And, and what age are they now? Uh, so we have 11, we have eight, and one. 
Oh my God. Yeah. Is it going by fast? It does go by. I mean, you know, it's like yeah. everybody says that to you too, which is slightly annoying when you want it to go by fast, you know, like in that <laughs> right. phase where you're like, no, it actually, yeah. I'm in a very tricky space right now. Um, but then, yeah, it just breezes by and then it gets That's sad. A big span, 11 to yeah. one. Yeah, like, yeah. Holy mm -hmm. moly. And three girls. All girls. Is yeah. Alex like, is he? It you know what? I think like there was like a little point where we found out we were having a third where he was like, it's the son I didn't know I was going to have, you know? And then... <laughs> Yeah. No, we had another girl. Here's the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. But he's sakes. such a good girl dad. And yeah. I, I was really happy that she actually was a girl because I just don't know boys at all. That's not my life. You know, we're just stuck in Disney princesses and Taylor <laughs> Swift and all of that stuff. Oh, but what a riot though. I mean, it's just, um, my son was so much fun, you know. How old and is he now? He's 32, oh. married, living in San uh, Sacramento. Oh, he okay. flies out of Oakland. He's a pilot for FedEx. Oh, you know, that's he, amazing. Uh, yeah, he's my kid because he plays hockey a few days a week and he flies airplanes. Right. So yeah. he uh, is definitely you my kid. I, mm -hmm. I just saw him for uh, for my Mel's right. 40th birthday, mm -hmm. and uh, he came in with his wife Alex, and oh. we had a great time with with the other Mel Samuels. Yeah, with, yep. Um, who worked with us on on Fuller House? So best, best it just MS. isn't it amazing? Our lives just keep intertwining with all of these people with we, my Mel, with Mel Samuels, yep. with you, mm -hmm. with all of our Full House. I know. People. I always get updates about you guys from Mel. Yeah, and I talk to your Mel too. Yeah, we have uh, a little. Well, she loves you. Yeah, she, she's she, the best. Yeah, yeah. You got, got a good one there. I got lucky. Yeah, I got I got really lucky. Um, so you got your three girls. My yeah. goodness sakes. Um, now, what age were you when you when you started acting? Oh gosh, how old was I? I mean, I don't remember a time where I wasn't, you know, uh, entertaining my family and annoying yeah. everybody, like singing and doing plays at home. Um, but I professionally started acting. I mean, Full House was my first, you know, real job. I did uh, like a commercial before that. Right. So I think I was like eleven or twelve. So same age as your daughter. Yes. Isn't that crazy? Yes. Now, is is it um, to think of where you were at 11 on Full House and to think of your daughter, does that just blow your mind? It's like, blowing my mind right now because I've never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, she really is that age. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, when we were doing Fuller House, she came to a few tapings because she was very into the show. Um, and at that time, she was doing the whole, like, I want to do this too. Right. And it scared me, you know. I did not want her to get... And now she's kind of gotten off of that, I think. Yeah, um, you don't think any I mean, one of them's going to... You know, They'll have the one out of three. There's no way we're escaping this completely. Um, I will do my very best to sway them. Oh, man. And then you get to be a stage mom. Oh, yeah. I'd be the worst go stage to, mom possible. <laughs> and I remember we had one kid who uh, was on was on Full House. And uh, I remember his, his mom was, I think, one of the Rockettes. Oh. And I remember he was doing like a dance number on Full House. And she was up in the stands like mimicking the exact. Yeah. So you knew that she... Uh, choreographed his entire Correct. dance thing for full house yes but yeah but you know what we were lucky because we had great stage moms janice sweeten was yeah. great yeah barbara cameron was great yeah. sherry barber i mean yeah um jarney olson dave mm -hmm. olson they were they were all so great mm -hmm. um so let's see you and my you're, mom also was just i'm sure you don't you couldn't even pick her out of a lineup if you saw her because she never was on set she just used to sit in my I trailer ever, i don't think i ever met your mom yeah i mean you definitely probably saw her maybe at a taping but she was not a stage mom either maybe that was a requirement to being on the show like you couldn't have any stage moms because she just that she hated that really yeah and so I, she but she had to take you to your right stuff, so she would just right? i mean i remember anytime i would go in my trailer she was in there just like reading a book or you know doing whatever in no there no interest right no. just no interest no that's like my family yeah my dad my dad would be like uh i'd you know i'd call him i'd say dad did you see full house yeah what night's it on again <laughs> Like, dad, my dad was a Christ. You're like, guy. it's not that hard to find. Yeah, yeah like, it was like Friday night. Goes, show. Yeah, I saw that. Pretty good. Pretty good. Are you doing more? And I was like, oh, dad, boy, oh, boy. Um, I don't think I've ever had a chance to tell you this. I've always thought you have wonderful comedic timing. Oh, thank you. Where do you think that comes from? Because you just, you, it, that's hard to teach. You either yeah. have comedic timing or you don't. And to be thrown into a sitcom 
and just have that at 11 years old. Yeah. Where does that come from? I have no idea. And I agree with you. I mean, doing a dramatic scene is so much easier even now for me than doing anything comedic. I, I, I still intimidates me a lot. Um, really? Oh, yeah. That I am so surprised to hear you say that because yeah. you do it with just such reckless abandon and i feel it, like you haven't watched an old full house episode that i'm on in a while because the <laughs> acting is shocking <laughs> well i never i never i never watched full house okay so that's so probably why you think i'm so funny I never no i just i have a pretty good memory still it's still firing and the synapses are going <laughs> but um you, you know i i just remembered that you always had great great comedic timing. Well, that role was like so perfect for me because she was so biting and, you know, just always being set up by somebody to come in and do something, you know, deplorable or irritating. And so I feel like, you know, that's inherently in me. Gia was a racy character. Yeah. Didn't you smoke or something on one show? Yeah. Like you smoked on a show? I totally smoked. Yeah. 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 Herbal cigarettes. Like (laughs) They were delicious. (laughs) (laughs) Do your kids watch you? Yeah. They do. Yeah, they, do well, did they watch Full House? They watch. They watch. They started with Fuller House, and then I, I was like, guys, you need to watch the original. That one's yeah. like, you know, you got to start from scratch, right? Um, and so, yeah, then they got into that one. And what do you tell them when they see Gia? Don't you, act like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially with the smoking stuff, they're horrified. You know, they're like, Mom, you were smoking. <laughs> that is just, uh, yeah. Because, like, what do you say to your kids? My son was like. Uh, he used to call it Daddy's Show because mm-hmm. uh, he was a little guy when we started. He was like two, three, four years old. Wow. So I used to take him to the set and he would hang out. And um, I remember uh, Mike Binder was here yeah. on a previous episode. And he told this story where uh, we were sitting around watching an episode of Full House. And he looked in the middle of the episode. Mike was over and he said, where's Luke? He thought, I've been with all these people and in, in our home movies and videos and stuff with Mary Kate and Ashley yeah. and John and Bob, Candace, Jody. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he just thought, why am I not in the video? <laughs> so, so it was like trying to explain that to your right. kids, you know? Yeah. There's definitely a but gray you're, area uh, there. You're, but as much as you work and you direct and you do all this wonderful stuff, you're so busy. It's, it's like, all you guys, I'm, I feel like a proud uncle. I really do. Like to see you flourish like that and have such a wonderful, wonderful career. Um, how do you, you know, how do you manage family, working on career with three kids, especially? That's I know. That, that it, keeps you running. Yeah, it sure does. I mean, I don't know. I feel like it's really hard to do both of them well at the same time, if that makes yeah. sense. Like I'm yeah. either super focused on being a mom like this summer um i'm like i'm leaning into being a mom and then when i'm away shooting i just set it up where i have a lot of amazing people helping me while i'm not able to be there you know so um i don't have the answer to that i wish i did but yeah they're both really time consuming and i and i met you i've met your husband alex who's a great guy Mm -hmm. just uh he's just real he seems like a real salt of the earth just he is such a good guy good guy yeah so i mean but that has to help. I mean, you oh, know, yeah, especially because, you know. I mean, I, I feel like with what we do, it, you have to have a supportive person who encourages you to keep going because I think it's very easy for us to be like, I'm done. I'm quitting. This is too hard, you know. So you have to have a person who's like your biggest fan. And he's always been that. So um, and he supports me leaving, which is hard yeah. when you're, you know, spouse. Well, having that having that support and the challenges of just raising three kids. Yeah, I mean, you guys are moving, you know, uh, constantly, like moving around. I know yes, what that's like. Yes, it's like the most complicated jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> yeah, in I the had world. one. You have three, which I cannot imagine, especially with the with the age. You know, yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Wow, that's yeah. such a that's. You know, like... COVID did funny things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't sound like you were sick. <laughs> Sounds like you were, uh, you were, uh, we're just living it up. Yeah. Yeah. No (laughs) kidding. Um, (laughs) yeah, I am just singing the praises of hello fresh. Why? Because I like my food quick and easy. I was kind of lost trying to get food the quick and easy way, you know, fast food, empty calories, unhealthy snacks. At one point I had more than a chip on my shoulder. I think I had a whole bag. Because when it came to my diet, I felt like I was trapped in the blues. I had a bad diet. Breakfast, dinner, and lunch. 
If it was bad, I would buy it. It was a real gut punch. Well, then I discovered HelloFresh. And they have an entire lineup of quick and easy meals with 15-minute recipes. That is me. You know, and they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And my pals at HelloFresh agree. And now, my Full House buddies, go to HelloFresh.com slash Full House Free and use code Full House Free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while the subscription is active, of course. But that is free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Full House Free with code Full House Free. Easy to remember, right? <laughs> That's why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. And that is music to my ears. Hello. Fresh. Yeah. You've wanted to be a director for quite a while. Yeah. Right? So when I was directing Fuller House, mm -hmm. you uh, got a hold of me mm -hmm. and you said, Dave, can I come and shadow you? And I was um I was very taken back oh, by that. Okay. I was very first of all, I was very flattered. Uh-huh. Um and then you came and you, you know, you spent time on the set yeah. and, and you watched what we were doing there. I, I, I was so flattered, but I, what I want to know is, did you learn anything? Because <laughs> I was thinking, I'm a new director. Right. Oh, hundred percent. I did. I mean, I'm, I certainly still wouldn't even know, you know, I, it's not that I wouldn't know. I would be very intimidated by a multi-cam directorial setting. You know, it's just mm -hmm. such a different world than single yeah. cam for me. So yeah, it was great to see you work. And, but I think the, what drew me to you um, was that you are an, are an actor and the way directors that have been actors talk to actors, I mm -hmm. think is so special. It's such a special relationship, you know, and yeah. I love actors so much. And yeah. I think that's why I love directing. Cause I can still, you know, tap into that part of being an actor that I really love and sure. have these conversations that only actors can have with each right. other, you know, right. we get weird together and it's so fun to, <laughs> you know, talk about these things. So that's what drew me to wanting to shadow you because I hadn't ever shadowed a director that was also an actor. Mm -hmm. See, I was lucky because my my best friend, Mark Sandrowski, uh, we've known each other. I don't, I'm not sure if Mark's ever directed you in anything, mm -hmm. but Mark, uh, Mark and I go back to third grade. We met each oh, other wow. when we were eight years old. And then, you know, he directed all 12 seasons of Big Bang Theory. Oh, okay. And so it's just, it's, it's incredible to have somebody, you know, uh, you know, I got to watch him be, you know, broke like me, you know, struggling yeah. and go on to become this, you know, this director. Yeah. Was that in your sights a, for a long time? Like if I ever get the chance, I would really love to direct. It wasn't. I never really thought really? too much about it. No, I was wow. really like just hyper focused on acting. And then I started writing and I wanted, I made a short that I really wanted to find the right director for. And I started mm -hmm. meeting with directors and I just, right. nobody was, not, I hate to say like they didn't have the vision or right, there's right. kids in it. And if two of the directors were like, you got to lose the kids. It's going to make the day so long. I'm like, it's literally <laughs> about house, a preschool. No kids though. No <laughs> kids. You got to get rid of the dog, the kids, get them out of here. Yeah. <laughs> just to make life easy, which, cause it was so low budget, you right. know? And yes, that made sense, but I wasn't willing to do that, do that. And so I just decided to direct it myself. And that really surprised me how much mm -hmm. I loved it. And I just wanted to keep going. Right. Have you directed any comedy stuff? Um, I haven't done like, well, I did a movie called Rosé All Day, which was a mm -hmm. comedy about some friends, like seven friends. Um, but I haven't done like a straight up, you know, situational comedy yet. Yeah. Which I'm yeah. very excited to do. Yeah, I think you'd be great at it. Yeah. What about like multicam? Would you ever dive into that? Yeah, I mean, well, first you of know all, the, that process as an actress really well. And it's like such a great schedule, you know, mm -hmm. with three children. That's like the best yeah. of both worlds. Yeah. Um, I would love to. I would yeah. love to. But it's harder than you think to get your foot in the door there. Yeah, th things have changed. Yeah. The the world is a different place. Trying to you know. Um, but it is what it is. You yeah. know, the business is constantly evolving. And I guess you I just I mean, it's so to... different than when we were, you know, on Full House. Like the the way it is now. Yeah. It's completely changed. You know what was the same, though? Was that 
the process hadn't changed. Oh, that's a good point. You know that we were back on stage 24 yep. at Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. which was freaky in itself. So the, freaky. The coincidence of that actually happening. How did that, do you know how that happened? It was a freak coincidence. It Seriously? wasn't like they said, oh, we have to put you guys back on stage 24. It was okay. like, wow, we're back on 24. This is. That's wild. I always thought that that was just part of, you know, the specialness of the show that Jeff wanted to have. Yeah, yeah. It was it was crazy being back there and all the memories and everything. So weird. Just kind of kind of flooded back. I was um, also on Friends, which filmed on that stage. Right. So I was. That was I, the good luck stage. Yeah. Twenty four was like, ooh, you go into syndication. Yeah. I'm, I'm What's 24. there now? I don't know. We got to find out. I don't know. I'll have to take a drive by there. Yeah. Say hi to the guard and go. Remember me? Yeah, He's yeah. like, no, sir. No, you cannot come on this lot. Get out of here. Your get show has here. been canceled. Get Turn out around. Of here. <laughs> so I, I think you'd be a great sitcom uh, yeah. director, actually. Um, you know, Thank it's, you for saying that. Yeah, I would love yeah, to. No, well, Are you offering you know, me a sitcom right now? Well, I don't have a sitcom. You don't? No, okay, I'm well, doing, find I'm one and this. I'll direct it. I'm, I'm doing, doing <laughs> we can split the episodes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we can definitely do that. Um, but it's, it's um, a wonderful schedule. It really is. It's like having a nine-to-five job in show business. It's like nine-to-three job. Yeah, some I mean, days. Well, what, so for the director, I guess you stay after sort of you're late you know you're there when i was directing and when i do direct i try to get there first so that if the grips have a question hey dave can you you know what about this like how big do you want the christmas wreath and you're like right. okay okay great you yeah. know and i try to get there with the crew people so that the, if they have a question i can talk to them about yeah. it and then you know after notes and talking with the network you know in our case it was netflix yeah. and uh, warner brothers you're getting notes so you're there with producers and you're talking about how you're going to coordinate that with the actors you know the next day so they incorporate all those network and studio notes and then you know the writers go back in the writers room and they make those changes was that hard for you to have changes as a director instead of getting the changes as an actor it it wasn't okay it, it wasn't and i don't know if that's just a, a little weird twerk in my brain or yeah. not but i'm so used to producers saying you know let's go back to that bit you guys were doing right. in rehearsal on monday we're yeah. gonna try that again you yeah. know because you know how it is it's when you're there it is so compressed it is such a vacuum but it's a vacuum that is going a thousand miles per hour yeah and there's all these people standing around waiting for you to hit your line and, you know, make it funny. Mm -hmm. And and so with that in mind, you know, I, I think I'd been through that process so many times that right. it didn't really phase me. It's like, there's going to be tons of changes. There's going to be. Yeah. But we got to keep the ball rolling. You know, I love working with the actors. Yeah. And I love um making stuff funny right you know getting the story right you know because you got to hit those story beats you right. have to tell the story for the for the writers and producers sure. but making those little gems you know those little moments where hey wait wait a second take the macaroni and flip it like that yeah you know and it becomes a laugh you right know? that's that's the part that really you know hits my heart where Absolutely. i'm like oh man getting an actor to be funny yeah um andrea barber was wonderful to work with so funny she was so physically funny. Yeah. She was almost like like the female Joey yeah. character, you know? Yeah, exactly. On, on Full House. Mm -hmm. And she was so wonderful because she just has this quirky comedic timing. Yeah. And she just gets the funny part right away. Yeah, and she has no, like, she's fearless. Reckless abandon. Yeah. She just goes for the joke. Yep. And it was so such a pleasure to, to direct her. Yeah. First episode I did was uh called the nutcracker okay and i had to choreograph this big thing where kimmy goes and she does this dance and everything and there's a scene where she has to die and uh i said to her i said have you watched the three stooges she goes not really and i go okay here's what curly would do when he would fake he would die he would kick his legs like that Ugh. and i got down on the ground and i showed her and she goes oh like this and she started kicking her <laughs> legs i said that's perfect that's just what curly would do so yeah, there's those moments that you just take those little gems yeah. when you give an actor something and you're like, oh, When man. it works. Yeah. And when it know. doesn't, then you're like, don't ever listen to me again. <laughs> What's your whole, when when you're directing something, um, but you've written and directed mm -hmm. some some of your projects, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What's your, take us through your process because I it's always different for everybody. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, well, this last one that I wrote and directed, I wrote, um, it was an idea of a girlfriend of mine, Haley Dev. And what was it? Um, it was called Sweet on You. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and she came to me with this idea. And Haley Duff did. Haley Duff, oh, Duff okay. came to right. me with an idea. Okay. And I thought, oh, this is such a great idea. We could totally, you know, make yeah. this happen. And um, then I wound up getting pregnant and I was clearly not doing any on-camera work. So I said, you mind if I take a stab at writing that idea of yours? And she was like, no, go right ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wrote it and then we sold it. And, you know, then it took like another year to actually yeah. make it. As yeah. you know, these sure. things take forever. Yeah. Um, and then we finally got to make it. And my process as a director is, you know, it's my favorite part of being a director is just the infancy stage and yeah. being there for every little decision and like locations and crew and, um, you know, every everything goes by the director. But the part that I love the most about it is you're doing this collaborative thing with people who are better at their jobs than you are, you know, yeah. like... Like you were saying, a grip. It's like I'm not going to tell anybody, you know, what to do. We're going to do it together in certain yeah. instances because, like, I I don't think I'm a better like cinematographer. You know, it's just a collaboration that I, it's so beautiful to watch. And then when it comes to the actors, I feel the same way. I really like let them do their own thing. And then if there's adjustments that need to be made or they have questions, then mm-hmm. we kind of build on that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much. So when you're writing, like some some writers will sit and they're like, I'm going to wake up at five. I'm going to write oh, for four yeah. hours. Right. Or are you a writer that just says, you know, when the inspiration hits me and I've got some time, I'm going to jot some stuff down. Yes. And that's actually kind of not great because sometimes people <laughs> are like, oh, you know, send me some scripts. Like, give me some more ideas of yours or let me hear some of your pitches. And I don't just generally have stuff laying around. It's like it has to be something that really comes to me and that I've believe in that I could write or that would be funny or dramatic, whatever it is. I can't just, it has to be something that's like within, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, but as far as my writing, I always feel like, you know, at around one thirty, that's when I hit my stride, like in the middle of in the, the day. morning. No. <laughs> Say, yeah. The kids are asleep. No, it's one thirty. I'm going to tiptoe out to the kitchen. <laughs> something happens yeah. to me in the afternoon or it's like one thirty two, And I'm like, okay, now I'm really, you know, from like 10 to one I'm just like, Hmm, what should I do? <laughs> it takes me a little bit to get into it. Um, how's Alex doing? Your husband's Alec. into music. Um, Al- Alec, uh, um, mm. uh, I was thinking of my son. Everybody calls him Alex. My, well, my son's wife is named Alex, so mm. I've said a million Alexes lately. It's very confusing. Um, Alec Baldwin. He's, just uh, think that. He's in the music business. He is. He's a composer yeah. for it, film what, and television. Right, yeah. What's he, What's he been working on? See, what is he working on right now? He's always, I don't know. Your kids, that's what he's working yeah, on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No. Um, he's just finished a movie actually with Harvey Keitel that he composed. Um, so that's an exciting one, but, um, I'm not actually sure what his current project is. I should probably talk to him about that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, In between passing, passing, (laughs) passing kids. Um, what do you like better? The TV process or the movie process as an actor? As an an actor? Yeah. Um, I love television because I'm a creature of habit. You know, I like going to the same place. I like working with the same people. Um, I just think there's a, you know, camaraderie that's really hard to get in a short period of time. Um, so yeah, I love, I love TV. Have you got a favorite show that you've worked on? That I worked on? Yeah. Is this like, you don't have have to to say, you don't have to say full house. No, no, no. I mean, that was like, I think the thing I'm the most known for, you know, um, is it really, you think so? Oh, a hundred percent. No kidding. Whenever somebody comes up to me, like in an airport and they're like, did you go to high school with my brother, David? (laughs) I'm like, I didn't. And they're just cannot figure out how they know me. I'm like, did you watch full house? And they're like, that's what it is. Do they know the character name? Sometimes. They come up and say Gia. Sometimes. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's because you're still young. Me, they go, uh, are you Jeff Daniels? (laughs) You know, that's not never, a bad person to be confused. By, I just, though, you I know? just saw Jeff. Uh, he came to to Mel's uh, birthday. Oh, party. so he's a friend. He's a friend. Yeah, oh, we're great. both Michigan guys. Okay, we've both been getting mistaken for each other for years. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. so funny. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, he said, if one more person comes up to me and does that, cut it out. Right, thing, and he's like, I'm I don't like, even know what you're doing. Yeah, I said, Well, how do you think I feel when people go, Are you dumb or dumber? <laughs> You know, he's a great guy. <laughs> great guy. He and his wife Kathleen, they they've become friends and uh, That's great. We're Michiganders. Mm-hmm. Any um w- what do you watch? When you if you're going to watch something, what are you binging these days? Are you So listen, I have two series? television mindsets. I have the one where I'm like let's watch Succession and get super into yeah. it and I'm mm-hmm. obsessed with it and like, yeah. you know, it's the best thing ever. And then there's other times where I get in bed and I'm like my brain needs The Real Housewives of Orange County. <laughs> you know, I need a, I don't try to give me a plot I just want people just mindless, yelling at each other about God knows what. Mindless, um, mm-hmm. mindless entertainment. Yeah. yeah. So, certain days it just requires that. 
I used to watch shows and I, I find myself not really watching them. Really? You know? Okay. And, and, you know, my wife, Melissa, thinks I'm cheating. Like if she, like right now she's off with her siblings, they're hiking in Utah. Wow. And if I go home tomorrow and she's gone and I'm like, I watched a episode of the silo. Uh, and she's like, you're kidding me. You watched it without me. It's like oh, I cheated on her. Right. Yeah. Like if you're watching a show. No, if you guys are in it together, you probably shouldn't watch it without her. Yeah. That but sometimes right. I'm just like, ah, you yeah. know, is she going to, do I tell her? Yeah. Just you watch know? it again with her just and be like, oh, again. what do you think is going to happen? That's the trick. Just watch it <laughs> yeah. again. Just yeah. watch, watch exactly. it again with her. Succession. That was a good show. Oh, it was so good. We're it's watching the silo, now. which is I've never weird. actually even heard of that one. It's, it's weird. People live in a gigantic silo. What are they doing in there? I, we're trying to figure it out. Yeah. Because they go outside and they have to clean and then they die. And Can they leave it? They, uh, the the, well, they, they're, it's called going out to clean. And once they, if you say, I want to go outside and clean, these like weird police say, oh, you, that's, that's in the pact. You, you're no, going to go outside. Not, and, this is not for me. It's dark. It's weird. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not dark like Handmaid's tail right that's that gives me the creeps i i mean the, i love they it lost me at a certain point yeah it just got a little too dark i love it but man it just gives me the chills yeah. up and down my spine which is i'm what that's i'm sure the producers are, yeah producers i'm sure are. yeah exactly yeah, yeah but binging is is something that um we didn't have back and when we were doing the no, show and I say you this had to, to my wait. children all the time like you don't know that feeling of like racing home from a soccer game to make sure you're at home in time for TJF for like wonder years right. or whatever. And you're going to miss it and just bolting home to get there and the <laughs> commercials. You've become good friends with a lot of the full house people. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that great? I mean, you guys are all so amazing. Well, I, I, you know, well, that's nice of you to say, <laughs> but, but there are some incredible people. Yeah. And, and I don't think there's too many shows that are like that. I mean, it's and it's also, especially being a guest star, it's, an, it's a really, you know, precarious place to be. Even if it's a show you've been on, you're a guest. And um, you guys never made me feel like that, which I've told you before. Because you cause just, yeah. You guys include me in stuff, which you is guys so are, nice. Because you just became family, you know? Right, but that's really rare it, when you but include normally. you were a nice normally. kid. You yeah. were a nice kid. And, you know, because um, we had some kids that weren't nice. Right. So they did and not get invited. They to the, didn't get invited to the parties. And yep. usually mm -hmm. they didn't come back to the show. Right. Like that kid is a demon. Yeah. Get him yeah. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we did have some kids like that. Where we were really? just like, yeah, oh, we had, we had actors and actresses meltdown. And you're uh, talking little kids. Like what are no, their these are, these are adults adult too. actors, adult actors. What are too. they melting down about? Just, you know, sometimes they would be because we're so used to the set and we're so used right. to, you know, we get our lines like that because we're used to our character and they right. hand us a script and go, oh, okay, I got this scene, you know, yeah. because you're just so programmed at, you're in at that a zone. certain point. And like you said, you know, you come into that environment and I have to, you know, you go to a show and you're a guest star, there's a whole operating system in place there. And you've got to somehow kind of put yourself in the middle of that and succeed. Which is really hard to do. And as long as the cast is inviting and yeah. it, I mean, I've been on shows before. I would never, I'll tell you when we're not here, but like where <laughs> I couldn't wait for the episodes to be Full over. House rewind after hours coming up. <laughs> yeah. You could get me to say it too. Cause I have the <laughs> biggest mouth, but um, yeah, where I couldn't wait for the episodes to be over because nobody would ever talk to me. And I just yeah. felt so ugh, strange being yeah. there and un not unwanted, but just like I was in the way, you know, you're like, Oh, sorry. <laughs> moving and yeah, yeah i just we never had that no never we never we never had that but i remember some a couple of actresses um you know you'd work with them during the day mm -hmm. and then they'd get to the run through and they would be and i felt so bad for them they'd be visibly right shaking because it's a lot yeah. of pressure you know you those run throughs are stressful though they are because um they're they're watching they're not there really to laugh right and but once in a while you'd get a couple of writers or producers who Always were the good writers. laughers yeah, exactly because they wanted to hear their jokes yeah. you know and you had to you had to give those writers a shot at their jokes of even course. if you knew this isn't a funny joke i'm still gonna yeah. give it to you yeah so you had to kind of be the sacrificial lamb sometimes <laughs> totally say that joke even though you know it's gonna tank yep and and it can be an intimidating process because you know first you got your work through with just the writers and producers the right. first day right but then 
you rehearse for another day and you got your run through mm -hmm. and that's network, network and studio people and they they don't laugh no they're just standing they there are a and then you see them do audience. this you see them do this they go yeah <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what are they, what, what is she writing all the time? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like only on my line. Yeah, exactly. She, she's writing, you know, <laughs> but it is, it is a, uh, a little macro environment. And, yeah. um, and then it, you get to the live taping and it's such a different environment because everybody really wants to be there in the audience. Yeah. So they want to laugh. They're ready to yeah. laugh. So, and, and we had that live audience, which I loved. And I think it's probably because I'm a stand up, and right. I, I just love that live yes. audience feel because you could really milk a joke you and know you could, what they want you could just stand there you don't get that the whole rehearsal process all week yeah. you're not getting that where you can just look and go mm -hmm. you know that camera's right here yeah and you just do this and you're like and they're dying and they're dying, dying. because they're watching yeah. up on the monitors in yeah. the audience you know that's the greatest feeling in the world i remember when i did my first episode of fuller house um, they hid me from the audience because they didn't want anybody to know that I was. Right. And that was really exciting to see their reaction. Oh, man. Or to hear I, their reaction. I, I think I was there during yeah. that episode. And man, they went crazy. Yeah. I think people uh, that were in those audiences for Fuller House, there was such a, I don't know if it was a nostalgic feeling or it was just um, we're all going back home again kind of all thing. All of that, yeah. But we would walk out on that stage and they would go sometimes for maybe 30 seconds, which is a long time yeah. of just screaming and applauding. And you'd have to, of course, hold, yeah. hold, hold, hold. And you're just waiting for them to stop so yeah. that you can say your line. Yeah. You know? I found that to be really remarkable. Yeah. You did too, huh? It's, it was, I mean, there's nothing like it. Yeah. It's so, and sometimes you want to mess up just to have that like funny moment, you know, but I also hate Get on the up. gag reel. <laughs> I never was on a gag reel. You were never on a gag no, reel? No, I was so annoyed with myself. Because you always knew your lines. I'm just lines. perfect. I know. You just always I, knew your lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's one of those things. See, I was always changing my lines. Right. So after a take, you know, especially in front of that live audience, right. I'd get a laugh that I got, didn't get all week. I'd run over to the producers there, you know, at Video Village and they're all sitting there and, 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 you know, they'd always pull the heads up, yeah. what? And I go, let me, can I try that again? Because what I want to do, and they'd go, all right, okay, we're going to try it again for Dave, yeah. you know. But that's the that's the beauty of doing a live show like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like the instant know? gratification. Well, and you also know what's working and what's not working, you know. Absolutely. You don't have to get into the editing room to see this isn't working. Exactly, which for movies, I would think that would be tough. Yeah. I've done a couple of movies mm -hmm. and I've never enjoyed that process as much. Really? Okay. Yeah, because I have the joke in my head and I right. have the laugh in my head. And if I don't hear it, it doesn't confirm. Yeah. You know, and I think that's from maybe it's from doing stand up where you're just used to stand up. You're just used to it, you know. But yeah. But stand up, you know, you're talking to the fourth wall. I don't you're, know how you do stand you know, up. That is so terrifying to me. When I Really? Oh my gosh. Like I, you know, I um, never. Uh, uh, I'm very shy. Normally, I'm I'm very shy. I kind of keep to myself. Um, I'm only nervous until I get to the microphone. Yeah, you know, it can be five thousand people, and I'm I'm nervous. And it's and it's not so much nerves; it's more adrenaline. Like, mm -hmm. just get me to the mic. And then yeah. I get to the mic, and it's just like, oh, oh really? Oh, I'm home. Oh. And then for that next hour and a half, it's just kind of like, wow, wow, you're in my living room, and we're just gonna have a good time, you know. But I've heard that from a lot of actors. Like you're you're on national TV, you're you're known everywhere. And to to get to a mic though, oh, um, I wouldn't even know like where to begin. I, I wouldn't. I mean, yeah. I think I'm more like if I am funny ever, it's just like off the cuff. And like I said before, like I need you to set it up for me, and then I'm like, I see my yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because when I was first trying to be an actor. I was only, I was like 19 or 20. I had moved out here. I'd done a lot of stand up already. And then the real tough test for me was, um, people would go, Oh, I saw your set at the comedy store. That's why we brought you in on this, this audition. And then they'd hand you a script and go, now, can you make this funny? Yeah. And I had a real challenge. That's so different. Um, making somebody else's words funny yeah. within the context of what they've written and staying within their story. Mm -hmm. I really struggled with that. Yeah. And um, I had a great, I finally said, I've got to get an acting. I've got to go to a class. And yeah. I, 
I was uh, in Gordon Hunt, Gordon Hunt's acting class, Helen Hunt's uh, father. Oh, right. Yeah, and Gordon uh, had directed me at Hanna-Barbera doing cartoons for oh, like cool. Scooby-Doo and stuff. Yeah. So he's like, Dave, you're always so funny off mic, you know, when we're recording you, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I said, I think I need to take your class because once they hand me this, I'm like, uh, I don't know those beats. I don't know that story. I think there's also, you know, comedy is so much about being relaxed, you know, yeah. and just having just like how you were saying, you grab the mic and then you're just feeling like you're at home. Yeah. If a actor is tense at all and there's not that loose. Yeah. And that's why you're so funny because you and, have that. Well, thank you. But there's a rhythm too. Yeah. You know, and a, and a script has a rhythm, yep. you know, stuff that you know that, you yeah. know, you write things and there's a, there's a certain rhythm that you have that. You know, there's a certain story arc and you know certain things are gonna happen throughout your story. Yeah. With with comedy, there's that da 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 boom. Yep. Da 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 boom. Yeah. You know, and stand up is a lot like that. But you know, what do you when you're working with your actors mm -hmm. in a movie, um, have you ever worked with someone who's really nervous? Have you ever like, Um Sure like someone who's yes. not quite in the moment? How do you yep. corral them? It's hard, you know, especially yeah. in a movie that's um, cast really quickly and you don't have a lot of time to have any rehearsal or right. know the actor. Right. Um, you have like a quick phone call with them and then you're on set with them. Yeah, I think that's really hard. I don't think that that can be even directed half the time. You yeah. know, it's really more for like a post-production standpoint yeah. on how you fix it. From what I've learned, um, you could try and get them yeah. as close as, you know, but you know, that, that really comes from experience, just being comfortable in front of a camera. It's, oh, yeah. You know, some actors, you, like you were saying, that run through. It's like you're suddenly like a deer in headlights. You're like, what happened to you? I uh, I learned a lot from Stamos. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because um, I hadn't really acted in a lot of things. I'd done a couple little movies, and I guest starred on New Heart and Family Ties, but they were tiny little things, you right. know. So then being thrust into Full House, where yeah. holy cow, you know, uh, there's entire shows you yeah. got to carry. You know, you're the central character. They're writing a... So Stamos um, was already so technical with his acting. He yeah. knew exactly where those cameras were because he'd been on General Hospital. Yep. He'd done a series with Jack Klugman. He did another series for, I think, CBS called Dreams. So he knew what he was doing. And I'm just walking around, you know, just, yeah. uh, hey, how's it going? Yeah, like you know? the camera like, is just going to follow me. He, right. <laughs> and he would just kind of pull me back he'd like pull my shirt oh, back in really? scenes you know because he was trying to clear me from his camera right he's like get out of my camera. yeah and get he, out of my and, shot bro and we would and we would be you know doing our camera blocking and he would just go would you stop upstaging me i didn't <laughs> and i'm like upstaging you i don't even i didn't even say a joke he goes no 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 your like, eye line is upstaging right. me yeah i had no idea what that was but also it's like someone could have told you that if somebody you know knew that you were new to this right how but, did you get uh, uh introduced to jeff like how did you land joey um i just went in the role of joey they they auditioned every comedian oh okay and so they knew they wanted they auditioned in new york they auditioned oh, wow. in la and uh jeff told the story here i came in and he said you were just joey you were just right. exactly like you know it's like woody harrelson walking into a character named woody on right. cheers you right. know yeah but he just said you walked in you did your audition and he just said that that's it. And then Tom Great. Miller stopped me and he said, wait a second, I'd like you to read for the father. And Jeff was just like, steam was coming out of Jeff's ears. He's really? like, the guy just nailed it. It's him. I want to make him an offer. Right. And so I said, oh, okay. All right. And they gave me the sides. I came in five minutes later. I read for the role of, I think it was still called Danny Tanner at that time. I don't know if it had been changed yet, uh, but I read for that and they said, oh, thank you. And I thought I just blew it. Right. They didn't like what I did, Just so they said, well, out. maybe he can read for the father. Right. And I walked out of there going, that's it. I'm done. I'm, you know, here's another show. I'll just go off to another audition. Then I went home, and, and I got a message from my manager, Brad Gray. And he said, hey, Dave, you got this uh, full house pilot. Oh, wow. And uh, that was it. And then that, that was... Uh, Jeff was good friends with my friend Gary Shandling. Uh huh. And so Jeff was working on the It's Gary Shandling show. Okay. And so those two knew each other. And I think Gary told Jeff that I was funny. Oh. Because I wrote with Gary a lot. Amazing. Um, so Gary and I would punch up his Tonight Show sets. 
and uh, you know we were just friend, friends from the stand up world. Wow. You know? So that's that's the connection. That's with, so uh, great with Jeff. That was history. Um, so other than uh, than being a super busy mom with yeah. three beautiful little girls, what's Thank what's you. coming up for you? What? Um, uh, so I have a couple other projects that I'm going to be directing coming. Can you up. tell us about them? It's a movie called Destiny's End, um, and. I wish I could tell you who's in it because it's going to be so great, but I, I'm just so superstitious that that's all. If I say it out loud, it's all going to go away. But, um, and then another movie called Pony Up that I wrote with my writing partner. Um, actually, I didn't write it. My bad, Katie. Don't kill me. Katie Keene, who's an amazing writer, she wrote um, Rose All Day. We came up with this idea together, um, and I'm going to direct that one. And it's basically like a um, female city slickers. Wow. Um, on a dude ranch. That's good. So, have you ever had to, um, you ever had to fire an actor? Because that happens in our business all the time. I, I've been fired. Have you? Yeah. Wow. Sure. Nope. Didn't like that. Um, uh, I haven't. Knock on wood. I don't. I'm so bad at that. That's where I'm not a great director. What, at what? Like someone's not right for the. Have you had anybody that you've directed or one of your projects that you went, oh man? Oh, for sure. Really? Definitely. But it's always at that point. You know, you got to just get through it. Yeah. Um, but I would. I'm like, you know, if I have like a problem with like a babysitter or something, like I make Alec go talk to her. Like, I'm not good at that kind of confrontation. I I definitely need to like put my big girl <laughs> panties on a little bit more in that authoritative position as a director. Yeah. Um, Cause that's, I, I would say that's like my Achilles heel a little bit. Cause everything funnels through the director, yeah. you know, in movies and television, yeah. you know, you're answering everybody's question. And if you don't have an answer, you're kind of, everything stops. I actually got very good advice um, from my um, first AD that I worked with as an actor. And then I brought him with me on a couple movies, um, Xavier Puslowski, who I love. He said to me on my very first feature, I was so nervous. You know, we were in Utah and it I'll was bet. like, yeah. I mean, imposter syndrome doesn't even cover what I was going through. <laughs> I was like, why am I, what am I doing here? Um, and he said, if somebody comes up to you and they say, do you want the blue couch or the green couch? Just don't think, pick one. And then if you want right. to change your mind l later, you could do that. But you, there's nothing worse than an indecisive director. So, oh, yeah. you know, just don't be like, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, and it was I've, great advice. Yeah, I've worked with some first time directors or directors who hadn't been thrust into the sitcom world. And sitcom, because you've got five days. Right. And, you know, some are four days. Mm -hmm. I think for Fuller House, I think we were I four. Think so, yeah. Uh, that's pretty that's like a pressure cooker. Crazy. And if you're not up to speed, um, you know, knowing everything that's going on, you, it kind of rolls right past you. And I've seen a couple of directors where, you know, the, uh, the AD had to kind of pick up the slack. You don't want to be that director. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it happens, but it's a, I always think of a sitcom as you're kind of conducting an orchestra. Yeah. You know, because you've got set directors, you, directors, you got, you know, writers, producers, you've got, you know, your actors, you've got props, you've got, you know, all this stuff that's happening. The yeah. audio guys, you know, up, up in, in the, the gangway rafter, up whatever, there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of directing, you know, everything. There's a lot of and, it, parts. And, it, and it has to kind of come together yeah. on show night. Yeah. You know, and you got to kind of be able to conduct all those people because. Uh, and there's a, what's the position actually called on a sitcom where there is a, is it camera director? You're going to stump me. You're going to totally. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, this is not totally supposed to be a quiz for you. Uh, yeah. I think it's what is it? an AD associate director. The associate director. director. Yeah. yeah. An and that's yeah. so amazing to have that person who's kind of making sure you're not skipping any of those steps. Yeah. And we had a great one on Fuller House, Lex Paceros. No, oh, yeah. And Lex was unbelievable. Yeah. And so, he did only the first few, right? And then. Yeah. 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 And then he, uh, he just kind of said, I'm out. Um, yeah, and he's he, sick of you guys. You know, no, it wasn't that. He was just kind of done with showbiz. He was just kind of like, oh, I'm out. I'm yeah, done. I'm, I'm going to rest now. Yeah. You know, because he worked for a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, on a lot, a lot of shows. You know, Marla, I am so proud of you, and Thanks, and I Steve. hope that's not an insult. Not at that. all. Like I appreciate you know, that. But I'm so proud of you that you've, um, you know, that you've flourished so much in oh, in a thanks. direction that you should be going in. Because thank I've you. always thought you were really smart, and like to be a professional kid, that's not easy. No, that's not easy. And yeah. you always were. 
And um, I just I just think the world of you because you are you. a full house family. And I appreciate thank that. Thank you so much for being right here. Anything you. else you want to talk about? I mean, oh, um, should we like gossip about people? We can gossip. Who should we about talk people? about? I don't know. Like Who Mel do you Samuels. Got? She's the Who worst. Do you got? Mel Samuels. Oh, terrible. Boy. I hear terrible. she's got this company, Mel and Mel. Yeah, that's a you joke. <laughs> wow. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see me with a company, Dave and Dave. Yeah, exactly. Like, That's get over yourself, sure. <laughs> Melanie. I love the company. I love my name so much. I named the company both <laughs> of our names. You know. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me on. I was so honored um, when I got your text. I was so excited. Well, you're the perfect guest. You oh, know, you're the thanks. perfect guest because um, I've known you a long time. Yeah. Uh, you've been a part of Full House and Fuller House, mm -hmm. and I just think the world of you. You Thank know, I you. think you're so talented, and thanks, and Dave. and uh, uh, I think. I think you're a better comedic actress than you than you think. Really? Because uh, yeah, because you make me laugh, and, no, and sometimes uh, you know that's that's hard to do because uh, you know I'm an old curmudgeon at this point. Just dead inside. Seen everything. Yeah. I've seen everything. <laughs> <laughs> seen everything. These kids. Are, uh, but of course, Marla, we get to do one more thing before we say goodbye because it's time for aw, cut it out. Oh. Cut it out. Of course, every episode of Full House had a heartfelt scene, and we have. Cut out a scene from episode six that we're going to read together. So you got your script. I'll be playing the role of Danny. Okay. And you're going to be playing the role of DJ. So this Great. is from episode six. Here we go. And action. DJ, you are a terrific big sister, but no one has put on an act in this house. Now, what's, what's bothering you? I don't know. Today was so much fun. You took us horseback riding to the circus to Marine World. But I kept getting sadder and sadder. Well, what part depressed you the most? The circus clowns or Shamu? I mean, maybe you were sad for the same reason I was. You were sad too? A little bit. Because the more fun we had, the more I hated to see it end. I just wish we could have days like this all the time. I really love being with you. Well, I love being with you too, but there's no easy answer here. I know, you have to work. Well... I wish I could be in two places at once, but I, I just can't. You know, I feel better. You do? Yeah. I mean, we didn't solve anything, but it just talking about it helps. Yeah, it, it helps me too. And and you know what, DJ? I promise, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna find more time to spend with you girls. And any time you want to see me, you can always pull me out of school. <laughs> Especially if you want to see me during math class. Ah, now that's a DJ happy face. Come here, you little tennis ball head. And scene <laughs> always brings a tear to my eye, that tear-jerking scene from Full House. Wow. Thank you, Marla, so much for being Thank here. Marla Sokoloff, ladies and gentlemen. I just love Marla. Such a great guest. Great having her here for episode six of Full House Rewind. Here's something interesting about episode six of Full House. This episode was directed by Howard Storm, and I was very excited that he was coming to direct the show. You see, I was a big fan of Robin Williams. I would see Robin all the time at the Comedy Store and the Improv in L.A. when we were doing stand-up. Howard Storm directed 59 episodes of Robin's huge hit TV sitcom, Mork and Mindy. So, being a comedian on a new sitcom, I wanted to hear some of Howard's stories about Robin when he was directing them. What I learned was that Robin would ad lib whenever possible during rehearsals. Tom Miller, one of our executive producers on Full House, was also a producer on Mork and Mindy. So I would start ad libbing during rehearsals and, and run throughs, and if I thought it was funny, the producers would write it into the show. So during rehearsal breaks, I would ask Howard questions about directing Mork and Mindy, and he loved holding court on our stage telling stories. To gather everyone on the stage, Howard would always say, Settle, please! And then he'd tell one of his stories that lasted a long time. So, I started to do an impression of Howard Storm, where I'd say to the cast and the crew, Settle, please! I'd like to tell a story about when I directed Robin Williams on Mork and Mindy. It'll only take about an hour and a half. Well, Howard always laughed at that impression, and we had a great time. He would go on to direct a total of three episodes of Full House, as well as several episodes of Valerie, Head of the Class, and Everybody Loves Raymond. I wonder if Ray Romano ever asked Howard Storm any questions about me and Bob Saget on the set of Full House. Full House videos seem to be everywhere you look on the internet. 
and we like to bring them to you on Full House Rewind. So here, take a look at this one. Man, people love reenacting our Full House opening titles. If you got a Full House video you'd like to send us, we'd love to hear from you. Send us the link to your video at fullhouserewind at podco.us. Oh, somebody's at the door. Hey, Dave. Hey, it's my buddy, Mr. Woodchuck. Did you just talk about a storm? Uh, yes, Howard Storm. He directed episode six that we're talking about. Whew. Thank goodness. I thought you were saying there was a storm coming. Us woodchucks don't like lightning. <laughs> well, why is that? Because lightning bolts can start a fire with... Wood. You got me. <laughs> oh, somebody's at the door. Hi, Dave. Hey, Comet, what's going on? I just talked to Mr. Woodchuck. There's a storm coming? No, 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 no. I was just talking about one of our full house directors. Oh, okay, because Mr. Woodchuck seemed kind of scared. I get kind of scared when there's thunder and lightning, too. Comet, there's nothing to worry about, okay? Can I go upstairs and lay down in the room with the pink bunnies? Absolutely. Just don't make a mess, and you have to be quiet up there because we're doing the show. Okay, I'll be quiet. I'm probably going to stop by every day. Love you, Dave. Love you too, Comet. Oh, somebody's here. Oh, it's our neighbor, Granny Tanny. Hello, David. Hi, Granny Tanny. I was watching the show and there's been a lot of talk about TV directors. I know what you're up to. Mm, what am I up to? You're secretly interviewing directors for my spin-off. No, not not really. Don't be coy with me. I'll be streaming to millions of people before you know it. Uh, well, okay. I got to go put on my comfortable tennis shoes if I'm going to be on set with my new show all day. Have your people call my people and tell the big boss I said hello. Bye, David. Boy, Granny Tanner really thinks she's getting a spinoff. Just one more thing I get to deal with, I guess. I could kind of use a Tanner family hug right now. Hey, you know what? Let's share a hug together. Because we close every episode of Full House Rewind by giving all of you who need it a hug. So here it is, your Full House hug. Come on, bring it in. Yeah, that's better. That's our show. We'd like to thank our special guest, Marla Sokoloff, for stopping by. And thank you for listening and watching. Because you are the heart and soul of Full House Rewind. Never forget that. Now, go out there and share the love. So long. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Full House Rewind. To watch clips from the pod, go check out the Full House Rewind Clips YouTube channel at the link in the description. And we'll see you next week.